set up here. Thank you for being here today. Okay, I just put a link to one of the uh, documents that we're going to use today into the chat. It's a Google Doc, so you can you should just be able to click on it and have at least viewer access. That's all you'll need for that today. So I'm going to move forward. We're already a couple of minutes behind, so I'm going to catch us up. Uh, I'm going to get the presentation shared for us, and we can begin our conversation. All right, I've got the presentation shared. I've got something for us to think about as we begin this presentation. Um, can someone please let me know that you can see the presentation? All right, thank you, Melissa. You. Thank you, Gina. Okay, so let's begin with our soft start, guys. I want you to think of something that you've done. Uh, recently or in the distant past, either or professional, that you would like some recognition for. Uh, I know it's a little weird feeling, right? Um, but you have accomplished so many things. So let's go ahead and put those into uh, either the chat or unmute yourself. What have you accomplished recently that you would like some recognition for? to sneak into the chat just for a moment. All right, Rachel went back to school. Uh, Melissa is started and sticking with therapy. Awesome. Yeah, Nick, weatherizing a room before the snow hits. I'm going to piggyback off of that one. Uh, just recently, I, I tried to get my snow blower tuned up and found out that it was damaged beyond repair. And so I, I ordered a new one and it came and uh, about three weeks ago and there was some setup involved. Let's just say I didn't expect there to be some mechanical setup and that's not really a strong suit of mine, but I dedicated uh, three or four hours uh, on a Saturday, just I think last Saturday, and accomplished the setup of the snowblower um, in what would have taken a normal person, probably an hour, hour and a half. I did it in three or four. So I'm very, very proud of myself for that. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Rachel, I hand. Oh, people are applauding. Okay. Fantastic. Let's go back to sharing then, uh, sharing the screen. So I, I wanted you guys to just kind of put that out there uh, because today's work is introspective. And often uh, we accomplish so many things and we, we don't tell others about them. We don't celebrate ourselves. So today we're going to dig a little deep in our brief conversation this morning. So you're in the conversation, the equity conversation for moving with purpose and intention to bring real change for students. And that starts with us. So you know you're in the right place if you want to talk and learn more about equity. If you want to take that introspective dive 
into yourself and learn more about who you are and what your beliefs are. If you affect it's by committing to some self work. If you want to have what I would call a true conversation, then you're in the right spot. So let's get ready to dive in. So today might seem like a lot of work in, in, in our brief time together, we're, we're going to have uh, some awesome introspection going on and uh, some good conversation. But just remember, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. And that comes from the great writer, playwright, James Baldwin. So today we're going to face some things. So let's hear a little bit about you. You can type this in the chat. First of all, who are you in terms of what's your name? Where do you work? What function do you perform at that workplace? And more importantly, what pulled you here today? Type that in the chat. Just basic information about yourself, name, employment information, and what pulled you here today? I'm going to unshare the screen just so that I can see the chat. I'm going to see it when my screen is shared, so I'm going to dive back in. So I just want everybody to make sure we've got the prompts for us. What's your name? Where do you work? What do you do? Why are you here today? Well, welcome, Rachel. And thank you for hosting. Welcome, Jen. It's like I have a couple of librarians in the place today. Welcome. Welcome, Gina. Awesome. Pivoting the existing work to focus on equity, social justice. Awesome. Thank you for being here, Margaret. Same to you. It looks like I have the right people in the place. I have the people uh, who are in charge of the libraries uh, and the reading material and the learning material. Awesome. And welcome, Melissa. Thank you for hosting today, too. Nick, welcome as well. Same to you, Jim. All right, I think I've got everybody, so I have an idea of who is here with us today so we can continue in our conversation. All right, so let's start with an inclusion question, okay? What comes to mind Quote, and this time I'd like you to unmute. Uh, let's, let's have an old fashioned conversation on this one, okay? That's at the core of equity. What is understanding that you, who your kids are and how to meet their needs? You're still focused on outcomes, but the path to get there may not be the same for each one. Can you react to that for me, those who are willing to unmute? What is that quote saying to you?
didn't get any need to unmute, but I definitely um, have something in the chat. Um, let me just expand so that I can see it. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for saying that. Okay. So, so Nick says to him, uh, it's the idea that one size fits all does not apply. And, uh, Nick, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, in this case, um, so anyone else in the chat, um, any other takes on this quote, other than one size does not fit all, which is 100% right by the way, but there could be multiple perspectives. Jim thinks about the bar and standards where we need to get our students to, and all students may, may not take the same pathway uh, due to learning styles, learning preferences, et cetera. Same thing as the one size fits all. It is debunking that idea. And you guys are absolutely correct. It is debunking the idea that one size fits all. And that's going to be the basis of our conversation here today. So let's meet. Uh, the presenters. I know that your uh, sheet says that you have Devon LaRosa from Chicago Public Schools, and I don't think he's here with us today. He may or may not be, but I don't here with us today. Um, he had another commitment, and I am Clavon Bird. I am his partner uh, in this work. And just a little bit about me, I have spent my entire career as an educator. The first 17 years of my career were spent as uh, a teacher and a building principal at Milwaukee Public Schools. So I have taught uh, or been the building principal for every grade, kindergarten through eighth grade uh, at that point. Uh, about 10 years ago, I left the principalship to become an associate professor at Cardinal Stritch University. Um, if you follow the news, you'll find out that Cardinal Stritch University recently closed its doors at the end of the um, spring semester, just this past year, earlier this year. And so I spent 10 years leading the uh, teacher education department, serving as an associate professor, teaching courses, um, for undergraduates, master's level graduate students, and doctoral level graduate students. So my education experience of from kindergarten through doctoral in terms of being able uh, to teach and share information. Upon the closure of, of Stritch, I decided to uh, form my own uh, consulting company, Clavon Bird and Associates, and um, in that capacity, I, I work uh, with colleges and college instructors. I work with uh, teachers at the uh, elementary, middle, and high school level, and I work with building principals and other leaders uh, for successful outcomes. So that's a little bit about me. I know that you all had a chance to introduce yourselves earlier, so uh, this was my my time. So let's get grounded on a few things to get started. This image here, or this series of images, is, is probably one that you've seen before. And it talks about um, sort of the, the ideas around equality versus equity. Usually, the ones that we've seen most often, if I move from left to right, are the second and third image, where we understand that in, in reality, um, if all of us are trying to watch an event, such as a baseball game, there may be some barriers for some of us, right? Some of us um, may be too short to see um, over the fence, or some of us may um, be standing in a pit so that we're unable to see the game over the fence. 
some of us have the means uh, to stack a crate um, to help us see over the fence. And then others have the means to stack multiple crates to get a bird's eye view. And so that's just sort of the reality of education. And I think we all understand that. And this is our starting point, our starting journey uh, in this equity conversation. But moving forward, moving from reality to equality, equality is let's give everybody the same size crate. Now, of course, that presents some issues. Um, uh, the, the, the person who is significantly shorter than the other two people still can't see the game over the fence because of the equality that was given. Everybody was given the same. Great. Again, this is getting at debunking that one size fits all mentality. So next we move into equity. Equity would be giving everyone what they need. Some, some viewers don't need a crate. Some need one crate. Some need two crates to adequately enjoy the experience. Where we'd like everybody to get to in our in our society is liberation where there's no fence at all so where does that start that starts with a discussion of this work so before we dig in a little deeper you have to know that equity work starts with you and i know you know that because uh what pulled you in here today that's what you said you said uh i i see that there's some inequity uh, in, in terms of how we're educating our, our students, and I want to do something about it. This will get personal. It will be reflective individually and together with no ability uh, to unmute. It will mostly um, be an individual reflection, but I will find some opportunities um, for group reflection as well. We have to be committed to this work uh, if we're going to see it through. Now, keep in mind, it's messy. It's messy, and it's mostly messy and not easy because of the introspection, because we're digging deep. This All of this work starts with us. It starts within ourselves. But if we can do that, and if we can take this on, uh, if we can dig deep and, and introspect, together, we can be better and have better outcomes for our students. If at some point we don't understand something, stop and ask. I will try to monitor the chat. Um, it's a little difficult uh, at times, but I will take certain moments to go come back and, and check. This is a judgment-free zone. This is a friendly supportive zone, so we will support one another. And we will talk about issues of race and, and um, we are going to be committed to removing barriers for all students, which again is why we're here. So after today's conversation, we won't be done with our equity work. Uh, the equity work is never done. There are always uh, new challenges in this road, but we're at the perfect starting point because it starts with you and me here together. So here's the, the the next bullet is 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 something that I think um, everybody should know. By engaging in equity work, you're signing up to be a leader. You're signing up to lead in some way. The, it it may not mean that your business card has the title of leader, but it will. By engaging in this work, you will become a leader. You will uh, lead around issues of equity. Um, not everyone wants to be a leader, but everybody that is involved in this work is ultimately a leader. It can be sometimes discomforting. That's okay. Not unsafe, just discomforting. Part of the reason why it can be discomforting is because we're going to talk about those messy issues like gender, identity, privilege, whiteness, blackness, ableism, and the list could go on and on and on. Not so much today in an introductory conversation, but it could go on and on. Equity work will move you to examine your position across various social contexts. Okay? So this is our time together. 
let's try to stay in the moment. Um, engage with me. And if you need to get up, if you need to take a break, if you need to refocus yourself, you know, those are all parts of adult uh, education. Please do so. And you rejoin us after uh, you take a moment uh, to care for your needs. So I've got a metaphor, metaphor to get us started. Remember, I said this work starts with us. So today, we're going to do something a, a little different. Um, again, the, the idea is introspection. So the metaphor is we're looking in a mirror as opposed to looking out of a window. Okay. Um, today, when we look into the mirror, we're going to gain insight into our authentic selves, our beliefs, our identity, our experiences, our strengths, and even our fears, which makes this have the potential to be some messy work. So here's a recap of equity. Here's equity 101, right? Since we're all uh, higher ed sort of people uh, in our jobs. Um, but you already knew this. I know you did. Uh, ensuring everyone has what they need uh, to be successful is critical for this work. Which is why I'm so glad that I've got so many librarians here today who uh, really make very important decisions on learning materials uh, at your at your colleges and universities. Removing the predictability of success or failure based on race or class. Okay, we can we can all look at tons of research uh, where the the research may correlate success or failure based on race or class. We we want to be committed to removing that predictability. Every student and adult has access to the support, opportunity, empowerment, resources they need to be successful and empowered to advocate for their needs. But to give everybody what they need, we must acknowledge, understand, and we're dismantling the structures that exist in our educational system, including our society as a whole, but we'll focus on our educational system. Structures are based on dismantling structures based on race, language, class, learning variabilities, all of which have come together to create a unique mix uh, that have created some of the inequities that we see today among our students. In this work, we've got to determine where we are. So remember, equity work starts with us. So let's start with us. Where am I? As, as an individual, right? And so now we're, we're, we're going to strip away the barriers of I am Clavon, the, the consultant. I am Clavon, the leadership coach. We're gonna strip away from that. And we're gonna to get to the essence of who Clavon is as an individual. So I encourage you to do the same for yourself. So our equity work is going to consist of these three phases. and this is um, probably where we're going to spend the rest of our time here today. Um, sort of looking at these phases and doing some self analysis. Okay, so we've got the discovery phase, the disruption phase, and the dismantling phase. All right, so I'm going to transition now uh, over to the Google Doc that I shared earlier. And um, that will be uh, where we will spend a good chunk of our time. So let me go ahead and grab it. I'll put it on the screen for you so that we're all looking at the same. Oh, wonderful. I, as I pulled it up, I can see that there are so many of you who are already in the document. I'm going to share it to my screen anyway just because I don't, I'm not so sure everybody is in. All right. Okay. So discover, disrupt, dismantle. Okay. We're going to spend some time um, uh, of the remaining time that we have left. And we're, we're, we're going to just sort of read a few statements 
uh, from each of the phases and try to understand what each phase represents. Remember, remember, we're going to call this work 3D. This 3D work is critical um, uh, to understanding of self and understanding of who, who we are so that we can adequately engage in this work. So what I'd like you to do is consider three sort of notations. And um, of course, you didn't have time to print this out, but you can sort of, if you've got paper next to you or a pen or something or, or some device, make a notation of some sort uh, uh, to help uh, you understand your confidence level with each statement. So I'm going to ask you to put something like a check mark um two statements that you can confidently own okay maybe a wavy line to statements that you are working on or maybe statements that uh, it's kind of part of what i do but i i need more work in this area and then maybe a question mark if um you're not even sure what the statement means so check mark for um full confidence, wavy line for partial confidence, and a question mark for I'm not sure where I am or what this means, okay? So you have this, and I, I, I'm I, not going to read every statement. Uh, you have this for follow-up later, just based on time constraints that we have. I can't read every statement, but I'm going to read a few from each category, and I want you to just sort of Add notations for yourself. So in the discovery phase, this describes uh, when schools or departments uh, are building this foundational knowledge about this equity work. And it starts with terms about racism, privilege, class, et cetera. Um, there still might only be a small core of people who want even get into this discovery phase to discuss race, equity, and anti-racism. So let's begin. Number one, let's take that one. That one's a really good one. I get uncomfortable talking about race with peers because I know it's important and I know it's a very heavy subject. Does that confidently discuss who you are? Check mark. Does that kind of discuss where you are at this moment, wavy line. Question mark if you're just not sure. Okay, take some time, think about that. Let's do a couple more. I'm familiar with the terms ally, co-conspirator, Ableism, LGBTQIA+, and BIPOC. Check mark, yes, wavy line, some, maybe not all, question mark, none. Number four, I read a book or multiple articles about these topics, racism, privilege, identity, socio-political, cultural aspects of racism and cultural relevance. Let's do two more. Number seven, I've taken an implicit bias test one or more times to understand my bias. I'll take a moment to just share. I've, I've taken many implicit bias tests and it, implicit bias is, there's no getting around that, right? There is always bias. And so I learned something new about myself each time that I take an implicit bias test. And um, be, because I'm having interim experiences between the tests. And so this is the reason why Devon and I say that this work 
is ongoing. Equity work is for life. Um, yeah. Number eight, uh, I intentionally reach out to uh, my students of color to make them feel welcome in the space that I occupy. All right, let's move on to the disrupting phase. Now, where are my disruptors? This phase is really about um, schools, uh, organizations coming together proactively, intentionally, that's a really good word, intentionally uh, to design and lead uh, about race and equity professional learning. Uh, which encourages deep conversations in the or organization. The organization does not shy away from it. Um, you as a person does not shy away from it, et cetera. Okay. Um, let's start with number one. Um, I work on my school or my organization's equity team. Check mark, wavy line, question mark. Number two, I'm currently reading a text surrounding race and equity. Lots of good authors there. Love, Coates, Kendi, Wilkerson. Um, she's probably my favorite, Wilkerson. Um, Baldwin, D'Angelo. Number three, I can, art can, I, I can articulate what microaggressions are and why microaggressions hurt people. Two more. Number four, I've changed my classroom practices, my instructional practices, my professional practices uh, to support black and brown students. Again, this is just for you. Last one, number nine. Again, a, a lot of our work is, is with schools and uh, individual teachers and schools and school districts. So you'll see a lot of language around schools, um, but wherever you see schools, you can certainly input organizations. Number nine, I have made moves in my organization or my classroom or my community that I work within to ensure that all students are welcome and see themselves as integral members of the community. This is what disruptors do. They change the landscape. They change the status quo intentionally. So we started with discovery. We moved on to disrupting and some get to the dismantle phase. Okay, in this messy work that we call equity work. So in this phase, uh, we are going to continue to engage so that we can elevate voice of our students, their families, those in their communities. Um, um, there's a culture of leading professional learning for colleagues who are influencers and allowing them to disrupt. So basically at the dismantle phase, we or the organization is setting the tone and the path for disruptors to freely disrupt. So let's get through a few of these and see where we stand. Number one, I show through my work and leading others that I believe all students can learn and should have the right to a high quality education. Where are we? Number three, are you a dismantler? 
I have developed processes to address real differences, tension, and consciously try to mend problems in my organization and in my community by focusing on the gaps and opportunities. I identify these opportunities and I focus on them and I develop processes if I'm a dismantler, taking down and tearing down the system that has existed for so long uh, that will not allow some to experience the game, right? Um, because the fence is in the way. Number five, I actively ask my students or their families, especially black, indigenous, people of color, to advise us or share their perspectives about how they could improve our organization. Really, this dismantling gets at, does everybody have a voice? Is the voice one of uh, the dominant culture, the dominant race in the organization, or does everyone have a voice? Let's stop there because I, I recognize that we have uh, just a couple of minutes left. And I, I definitely encourage you to continue to move forward after uh, our conversation today uh, and continue to chew on those um, disruption activities, uh, dismantling and discovery activities, continue to chew on those uh, on your own, okay? So I definitely encourage you to do that. So I have a couple things that I wanna share with you uh, before we move forward or before we end this. And a little bit of homework. I told you I was a teacher for a long time, educator for 27 years. I have to give homework. Wouldn't be right if I didn't. So keeping in mind, this was an introductory sort of conversation around equity. And it's okay wherever you are in this process. Are you at the discovery phase? Great, we welcome you into this work. Are you at the disruption phase? My goodness, how can I support you if you're a disruptor or a dismantler? Okay, so my last little piece that um, I want to talk about today is who are you, right? And understanding who you are, meaning understanding what your lens is, your authentic self, what's important to you, what drives you as an individual? Because how you view yourself is the filter and the lens for how you interact with others, okay? So we want to be mindful of our blind spots uh, and we want to understand where our growth areas are and where our bias is, okay? So I will put into the chat, into the chat a link to uh, this presentation so that you can um, have a copy of what you see on the screen here and either print it out or take some notation somehow, some way, okay? This is your homework. You don't have to share it with me or, or anyone else. This is for you, and this helps you dive a little bit deeper into the equity work. In fact, I wish we had another 45 minutes because I would love to get through this part, okay? So I want you to look at this wheel um, that we have here, right? It's sort of a wheel of uh, a mix of identities and um facets of self so we've got um religious spiritual affiliation race ethnicity not listed in any particular order social economic status gender sex sexual orientation national origin etc for homework i want you to um i want you to place a number one on the identities that you think about most often. Could be multiple. What do you think about most often when you think of yourself? Number two, I want you to place a number two on the identities that you think about least often. Number three, place a number three on your own identities that you'd like to learn more about. Maybe there are some gaps here in terms of, of what 
you understand about yourself. So there could be multiple ones, multiple twos, multiple threes. For four, find the identities that, you, that have the strongest effect on how you perceive yourself. When you wake up in the morning, which of these identities do you uh, feel impact you the most in how you carry on throughout your day? Place on number five on the identities that have the greatest effect on how others may perceive you. This is the entry point into this messy and deep work. So what's next? We can use three Ds, right? Discover, disrupt, dismantle. We're gonna use that uh, um, to help drive our equity work, okay? But before we can even do that, let's get good with who we are. That's that previous slide, right? Those identities, because once we start to identify uh, how how we perceive ourselves and how we think others perceive us and what's most important in terms of how we carry on and, and live our lives, we'll start to see gaps and we'll start to see maybe some implicit biases that may rise uh, as a result. And the only way uh, to uh, really attack those is to understand them, okay? So as we close out, um, uh, we're going to ask you to complete uh, an exit ticket um, that just sort of talks a little bit about, you know, what you learned today and how we could further support you on your equity learning journey toward becoming uh, disruptors and dismantlers. Uh, remember, th this is work that we can do. This was the entry point, but I want you to focus on your locus of control. What is it that you can control? What steps can you take to further engage in this journey tomorrow, the next day, and the day after? Thank you. I never want to go beyond time. I think it looks like I went probably three minutes past. We started a little bit late, but I'm going to stop here. I want to see if there are any questions for me. Um, do you have access to um to the um exit ticket etc let's see checking the chat because the okay thank you rachel jim thank you gina thank you Oh, thank you for putting the implicit bias test in there, Jennifer, Melissa. Thank you. Uh, Melissa and Rachel, do they have a copy of the presentation so that they can choose the exit ticket? Okay, I will. I will get that sent to you. Is that okay? Or, or can I put it in the chat right now, right here? And you can take it from there. Okay, I will put it in the chat. I'd like them. To